Hi, my name is Luke, and today I'm going to be telling you about aseptic techniques in the biology laboratory. So what are aseptic techniques? Aseptic technique is the process of mindfully handling microbial cultures, sterile solutions, and sterile equipment so that unwanted contamination does not occur. When working with cultures of microorganisms, it is important that there is no contamination by microorganisms from the environment, including your body and that the environment isn't contaminated by the microorganisms being handled. Hi guys, my name is Liz and I'm here to talk to you today about why we use these techniques and what happens if the sterile solution is contaminated. Aseptic techniques keeps apparatuses and solutions sterile. If I use this bottle of LB, but somehow contaminate it, when you then go and use it again, it's therefore contaminated from when I used it. So how do we keep things sterile? Ensure all windows and doors are closed and fans are switched off to prevent drafts and contaminations. Ensure that you and the work area are as sterile as possible. Sleeves should be rolled up, jewelry around the hands should be removed, and hair should be tied back. Don't forget to also wear your protective eyewear. This can either be your everyday glasses or safety glasses. Hands and lower arms should be washed thoroughly with soap and hot water. And the work area should be cleaned with a 70% ethanol solution. Remember to keep in mind that ethanol is very flammable. All glass instruments being used should be sterilized prior. To gather all the equipment needed, aseptic techniques require you to be good at multitasking. So once you've started, you should not put any equipment still being used down. Equipment should be prepared and located close to the Bunsen burner. Make sure you and your partners are ready to work quickly and effectively. To recap, don't forget to do these essential things before starting work at the bench. The first essential aseptic technique we will do today is flaming. Flaming is an important aseptic technique. To do this requires a lit Bunsen burner. Let's start with the metal inoculating loop first. Hold the tool facing downward, place the end nearest the handle into the Bunsen flame, and hold it there until red hot. Then draw the tool through the flame slowly until each part glows red. Allow the flamed tool to cool for a few seconds in the air, then repeat the flaming. Do not put the flamed tool down on the bench. Keep hold of the tool close to the flame to help prevent air contamination from landing on the flamed piece. Alternatively, it is sometimes faster to use a glass rod as an inoculating loop. I store the glass rod in 90% ethanol and flame it in the Bunsen burner just before I use it to transfer cells to liquid or streak an auger plate. Next, we will learn how to properly transfer fluids using a pipette. Let's look at how to grow bacterial cells in a broth. To prepare, we will transfer some sterile broth our liquid growth medium into some sterile tubes. We will use a sterile pipette to transfer the broth. A pipette is an instrument that transfers a specific amount of liquid from one container to another. Today we will be transferring LB from the jar into the glass tubes. These tubes have been sterilized. We know this because they have been sealed and marked with tape with black markings. In order to transfer this fluid, you must add the pipette bulb to the top of the pipette. Remove the air from the bulb by pressing the A valve and squeezing the bulb at the same time. This will create pressure so that we can suck up our liquid. Use your left hand to remove the cap from the bottle of LB. Use your pinky to hold the cap. Do not set it down on the bench. 
press the S valve to suck up the fluid. Only hold it until the desired amount of fluid is in your pipette. Remember to return the cap to the container using your left hand. Remembering not to set down the pipette. Using your left hand again, remove the cap from the glass tube and do not set it down. Then transfer the fluid from the pipette into the tube, pressing the E valve. Once you have expelled the liquid into the tube, move it away from the rest of your tubes so that you know you have already completed it. After you are finished, remove the bulb from the pipette and discard the pipette into the designated bucket to be cleaned. Today we've learned various aseptic techniques, primarily how to flame a loop, which can then be used for inoculating various materials. We've also learned how to properly pipette liquid material from one jar to another. Now that we're done though, we must return all of our equipment to the proper place and clean our workspace. Don't forget to properly use these aseptic techniques in the biology laboratory when necessary.